you're not having a good time, there's something wrong going on, you see. Coming up on this edition of Movie Star, the career of Hollywood's comeback kid, John Travolta. Shoes, that's tricky. Uh, believe it or not, Hush Puppies is what, what I'm most comfortable in, but Prada will do in a, in, a, in a bind. Those piercing blue eyes and cleft chin are unmistakable. John Travolta has been described as a phoenix rising from the ashes. His well-publicized return to the top after reviving a once-dead career is something that rarely happens in Hollywood. Getting to work with him, of course, has been fun. It was fun from day one. It was fun in rehearsals. You know, he's John Travolta, for God's sake, so you just want to see him do what he does. Every single thing he says, everything he tries is perfect and hilarious and right. I could not help it. I'm totally starstruck by him. He's wonderful to work with and such a nice guy. Fans appreciate John as much as his co-stars, and according to John Horn of Newsweek magazine, Travolta is able to ask for and get special treatment. He is one of the few actors in Hollywood who contractually demands and usually gets $250,000 for every movie he does for jet fuel. He was born John Joseph Travolta, the youngest of six, on February 18, 1954. His birthplace, Inglewood, New Jersey. His first break was in New York's small off-Broadway theater. His first claim to fame, the TV series Welcome Back, Cotter. Travolta played high school student Vinny Barbarino. He also appeared in his first movie, The Devil's Reign. During filming, a fellow cast member introduced him to Scientology. John may have been enlightened spiritually, but professionally, Devil's Reign didn't do much for him. The TV sitcom Welcome Back, Cotter, on the other hand, made Travolta an overnight sensation. This led to more movies, including the thriller Carrie and a TV movie about a boy born without an immune system, The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. So when are you supposed to get out? Oh, I don't know. Keep on looking for treatments. Travolta started dating his Plastic Bubble co-star, Diana Hyland, the actress who plays his mother. The next year, Travolta achieved big screen stardom with Saturday Night Fever. The movie defined the disco era. We were all really young, you know, we were in our very, very early 20s and, and new to, to everything, so everything was exciting, nobody was jaded, and everything was uh, one for all and all for one, and everyone cared tremendously about making a good movie. But the production was not a happy one for John. Diana Highland died during filming. John was shattered, even as his career was soaring. Saturday Night Fever in 1977 took him from being a TV star uh, into you know, the realm of, of a Hollywood superstar. John's next chance to strut on screen came in 1978. Danny Zuko in Greece was a perfect fit for Travolta's talents. Saturday Night Fever had come out, and he was a huge, huge star. So when we had the premiere of Greece in LA and in London, he was mobbed, and he got very, very frightened, especially in London, where they, they were pushing the car around, and he came in shaking and, and didn't want to ever go through that again. Travolta completed his early dance trilogy with another hit, Urban Cowboy. The movie started a country western dance craze. The first three movies, you know, Siren Fever, Urban Cowboy, Grease, all defined different aspects of Americana that I felt were important to be defined at that time, and I didn't know I was defining it necessarily. But John's winning streak ended with Moment by Moment, a May-December romance co-starring Lily Tomlin. This was followed by a string of less than successful movies. Brian De Palma's Blowout, the Saturday Night Fever sequel Staying Alive, the comedy dud Two of a Kind co-starring Olivia Newton-John, and the health club expose Perfect. By the end of the 80s, Travolta was making TV movies and gaining a reputation as a has-been. John Travolta's career was in a slump when Look Who's Talking came along. The baby comedy gave John a hit and a new friend, co-star Kirstie Alley. It was his next co-star that John found appealing. The experts introduced him to Kelly Preston. They married two years later. Off-screen, Travolta had also discovered another passion, flying, and bought his own plane. Travolta's plane appears in the sequel, Look Who's Talking Too. But other than that film, John's career was in another slump. The drama's Eyes of an Angel and Shout failed to connect with audiences. Travolta was grateful for another Look Who's Talking sequel. And then you're rolling back, drops like that. 
Unfortunately, Look Who's Talking Now wasn't as successful as the first two, and Travolta's future looked bleak. That is until Pulp Fiction, directed by Quentin Tarantino. I've never seen anyone like him. He knows exactly what he wants. He has more of a filmic um, uh, reserve in his mind than I've ever seen before. The real test of time isn't the Friday that it opens, or the way it, it's how the film is thought of 30 years from now. All right, and that's, that's what I'm going for. The movie that really kind of launched him into stardom, I actually think there are two movies, but one certainly is Pulp Fiction, and the second one is Get Shorty. I think the decisions he made there were to make good movies with good filmmakers and not worry about the paycheck. Travolta's paycheck for Pulp Fiction was reportedly $140,000, a small portion of the $20 million a picture he would soon earn. John was nominated for an Oscar, a British Academy Award, a Golden Globe, and a Screen Actors Guild Award. Travolta turned to his Pulp Fiction director, Quentin Tarantino, for advice on his next films. Tarantino suggested White Man's Burden, a small film about racism co-starring Harry Belafonte. Tarantino also recommended Get Shorty, and it turned out to be a perfect fit. Travolta plays Chili Palmer, a bill collector for the mob who wants to break into the movie business. Action. What do you get out of it? Is that what you came down and asked me that question? I've noticed this in the last 20 years of making films, that if people have an idea or a book or a script that they're excited about, and they're go-getters, they don't hesitate to pitch anything. The telephone book, if they have the right person, it's opportunity calls. And Harry Zim is the opportunity that calls Chili Palmer to say, OK, this is my chance to change this awful life that I don't really like, but I'm good at. I told you my name is Chili Palmer. By 1996, Travolta could call the shots. He had the choice of playing the good guy or the bad guy in John Blue's Broken Arrow. He chose the bad guy. Shortly after you receive this, the timer will be activated. At 901, I will make a call. If I find you've complied, I will stop the timer. But John also had success with good guy roles in Phenomenon and Michael. In Michael, John plays an angel sent back to Earth to help a couple of cynical journalists. And since dancing is a Travolta trademark, this angel could cut a rug. The, the script was pretty clever, you know, just in the, the gimmick of having an angel that is uh, overweight, dirty white wings, and smokes, drinks, and likes the women, you know. So you got a lot of inspiration right there, okay, to start with, it's, which is great. Uh, then, you know, I imagined how, what kind of little dance I might do, you know, I thought something tight and cool. John followed up with She's So Lovely, an intimate drama he also produced. It wasn't meant to be a blockbuster, but Face Off, co-starring Nicolas Cage, made up for that. The next hundred years! The two actors worked very closely. In the movie, their characters actually trade faces, so they had to learn how to imitate each other. It was kind of a collective acting process. John Travolta is very subtle. He's a very subtle actor. He's very cool and very subtle, whereas I'm more Baroque. I think in my approach. It was fun, because he's so distinctive. His walk, his talk, his, his humor, his bigger than life, uh, poetic almost attitude is, is, is almost fun, more than it is a, a burden. With the success of Face Off, Travolta was able to command $20 million for his next picture. Well, I don't got any demands, because I didn't mean for this to happen. Mad City proved to be the end of Travolta's winning streak. We used to come here. Come here. We invented it. You ride, I ride. Most important thing in life, always be... Banana! Dominic.